Well, Memo, I will say you're the first person on my podcast to ever bring in a live audience. We wow. have fans lining up at the wow. door. <laughs> fans. <laughs> we got Corey Robertson and Christian Hub watching in because they didn't want to miss the gold nuggets that you will drop. Um, but for those who, who don't know you, and they probably do because you're the reason this podcast even really started. Sure I am. No, you really are. Okay. Which I told you at Christmas because years ago when mom and I were at an event and the uh, interviewer asked me what's the best piece of advice I've ever been given. And I said something you said to me whenever I came in. I remember I was telling you about all my problems and I was like, Memo, what am I going to do about this situation? And I was trying to think of my revenge I was going to make. And you said, well, honey, you are not kind because other people are kind to you. You are kind because you are a kind person. And right. that advice has stuck with me. It's on the wall out here. <laughs> and mom in the interview literally said in the microphone, whoa, that's good. And behold, the podcast began. And so right. you had a fingerprint in all of this. We have so many memories. You you taught me how to play Uno. I and did. Be a savage. I never Uno. let you win. You didn't. No. That's why I said you taught me how to be a savage. Because I'm not gonna let anybody else win either. And whenever I have this daughter, she won't she won't be able to beat me there you <laughs> because go. you taught me that. Um, no, so many good things. But I want to ask you the question I ask everybody: um, What is the best piece of advice that you've ever been given? You know, that's a hard question. It is. See, and I thought about it because you warned me ahead of time. <laughs> <laughs> and the, the, my grandmother was really instrumental in raising me because they, we had a multi-generational family. My grandmother and grandfather lived with us all my growing up years. Mm -hmm. So, and she had a lot of advice. But once she told me when I was dating, to always look for a man who is kind to his mother, and he That's will be good. good to you. That's good. And and it really stuck with me so much, and I, I don't know whether that just became part of me yeah. or what because of what she said, but those things that I know she was talking about were kindness and goodness mm -hmm. and respect. Yeah. And uh, all of those things that you look for mm -hmm. in someone that makes you happy, yeah, that makes you feel good about yourself. And that's yeah. what I looked for, and that's what I found Aww. in a big, big way. That's so big sweet. Way. That's so cool that you said that, because I remember a conversation we had uh, sitting at Counterculture, me, you, and two mama. I don't even know if you'll remember this. And I had just broken up with somebody else, and you said, well, honey, you're just, you, you kissed a lot of frogs. <laughs> and you said, you're going to find your friends one day. And then I remember you encouraged me with, because we were talking about Pebble Shack, and you were just yeah. saying he was just such a sweet man. And I remember yeah. thinking, I don't think I've dated a sweet guy, like just a really kind, sweet person. Because that's that is a huge yeah. trait in people that, yes. you know, I don't think I think men sometimes might not think that that is of as much value. They want to be mm -hmm. masculine. They want to be all these things, but to be sweet and to be kind is such a huge treasure and an yes. attractive thing and something that is rare, but it's, um, you know, that's how they're going to treat you. And so I remember that kind of shifted in my mind. And then when I brought Christian home yep. and you said, he's not a frog. And I, was like, yes. <laughs> and I was like, and he's a sweet man. And it all just kind of clicked. Um, well, you know, you've got to be very, very strong within yourself. A man, yeah. I would think that a man would have to be really strong mm -hmm. within himself. Yeah. To be able to exhibit that be sweet. and be comfortable with that. Yeah, that's good. Yeah. So with Pebble, you know, y'all had an amazing marriage. How long were y'all married? 57 years. <laughs> yeah. That's so cool. Yeah. That's awesome. And he was the greatest man. He, he also told me that he was <laughs> colorblind, which is why he always put the blue card over the green in Uno. And I thought that was true until like two years ago you told me he wasn't. But he was a goober, but he was just awesome. Um, he was. What? So I know one thing was kindness in, in Peppa that you looked for, but what's something you would say that y'all had in your marriage? that you would encourage other people to maybe look for if they're already married, work towards? Mutual respect, I think, more than anything else. And always wanting to put that other person first. 
We, we always said, even both of us together, that marriage is not a 50-50 thing. Mm-hmm. It's a 90-10 mm-hmm. both ways. Yeah. Because you, you want to do the things, it, it should be within your heart to want to do the things that make that other person happy. Yeah. I remember, um, you know, when basketball was Papa's life when we were married. He mm-hmm. was a basketball player. And every night we went to a ball game. But that was okay with me because I loved basketball. <laughs> but later on, I was thinking at times when he went to hear, oh, we had a, a famous singer, Robert Merrill, a tenor, opera tenor, who came to Alexandria when we lived there for a concert. I was so excited about him coming. And Papa had never gone to a concert like that before. But he went along and said it was the best thing he ever heard. <laughs> and whether it was or not, he he made me think he did, yeah. which was important. That's so sweet. Yeah. I love that. And, oh, and not only that, our, our two oldest daughters were in an opera once. And he went to the opera and just, it was awesome. He said, we've got to do this more. <laughs> That's but he awesome. was enthusiastic about everything that made me happy. Aww. And I was enthusiastic about the things that made him happy. That is such good advice. I love that. I, I have to that. tell you, Sadie, this little quick story when we were first married, and of course we were so poor. He was in the Marine Corps and we didn't make any money. But we were walking down downtown in San Diego, window shopping, and in the window of this one store was this model with this gorgeous black velvet coat mm-hmm. on with rhinestone buttons across, along the front. And I just thought that was the prettiest thing I'd ever seen. <laughs> well, Papa bought that for me for Christmas. Wow. Yes. And I don't know, of course we could not afford that. So I had to be very cautious about what I said. What you said you liked. really made me happy because I knew he'd work really hard to see that was done. That's so sweet. I love that. What a good man. I, I was yeah, like, was. this year for uh, Christmas, I had just like mentioned a lot of things that I wanted for Christmas from Christian, but I was just kind of tossing it out. And I was so surprised when he like remembered everything down to like this little <laughs> face exfoliant razor. I was like, how did you remember that? Oh, that's that's, so that's such a good thing yeah. just for somebody yeah. to see what you that's love, right. to see what your face lights up for and, exactly. and to get it. I remember Pebble, you know, Pebble's love for basketball, and that was actually like where my love yeah. for basketball came. You really had a legacy for that. And I remember being in like sixth grade and like wanting y'all so badly to see me play on the varsity team. So I was like, I'm gonna have to work really hard yes. because I got we got a long way to go. And that year, I remember shooting like a hundred shots every day. No, making a hundred every day. I couldn't go in until I made a hundred every day. <laughs> Because I wanted so badly to be on the varsity oh, team. Your poor arms. And then I know, and then I made it in seventh grade. And I remember whenever I went overseas to play, you gave me Pitball's pin, his flag uh, that he had whenever he got it for playing in the Marines, playing basketball. Did for I Marines. really? Yeah, you did, oh my goodness, which was so special I've to me. That, so it was so cool. Well, you guys uh, set a great example for relationships. I actually just remembered this um, when I was little, and it was such a weird memory. Like I have very distinctive memories of pet ball just like little ones like playing guess who and how yeah. every time I spent the night with you he would sleep on the couch yeah. and I would sleep with you but one <laughs> other thing is I remember sitting in that play the the room the computer room that y'all had and he walked in one day and he told me he said whenever you're married one day and I, I mean I had to be like seven and he was like don't let the sun go down angry at your spouse and he told me that and it's so sweet. And so now Christian will always say for an argument, he's like, I know, I know, sun doesn't go down until he, <laughs> until we stop talking about this. Because it means a lot. That's one thing I remember Pitbull saying, yeah, the advice he gave me. Yeah, that was something that we did in our marriage. It's yeah. amazing. I love it. Well, you know, you're uh, an amazing, you're an amazing wife. And now you're a grandma, a great grandma, a great Wait, great, 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 great grandma. Yeah. You have a long legacy. So wait, how many grandkids do you actually have? <clears throat> uh, I have uh, 29 grandchildren. That's crazy. Yeah. That is amazing. 29 grandchildren. Well, now, wait a minute. Wait a minute. No, let's go back. I have 12 grandchildren. 12 grandchildren. Okay. And I have 29 Grandchildren. I mean, great, great grandchildren. Great grandchildren. And then, great, great, you have two. Two. Yes. And you're about to have 
two more. I know. Yeah, with know. me and Mary Kate. <laughs> and you had six kids. So you have a lot of kids yeah. happening. So for me about to be a mom with just one, what yeah. is your best yeah. piece of motherly advice for me? <laughs> I think the, the biggest thing that you can give your children is to be a strong parent, a strong, confident parent. It's good. I heard someone say once uh, when they were talking about rearing children, about children who were having tantrums and just going completely berserk, and that that's when your your job as a parent is to go in and stop that. Yeah. Because they can't do it, and they depend on you to take care of them. That's good. So it's that now, that, and that's as a small child, but I remember when I was in high school that. When my, when my friends would want to do something and involve me that I didn't think it was smart to do, I would say, oh, my mom would never let me do that. Well, whether she would or not, I, I hung in on her anyway. <laughs> That's good. So, so I, I knew then how important it was that you had a parent who said, no, that's yeah. not wise to do. Yeah, that's or, so that's, good. That's just, no, nah, we're not going to do that in our family or yeah. that sort of thing. That's so funny you say that because mom used to always say to us, she was like, if you ever need to blame it on me, you can blame it on me. There you like, go. If you and need I told out, my, two, my girls yeah. that too. If you need it out, just say your mom <laughs> said you can't because <laughs> it's true. She probably would. It's true. So I love what Memo was talking about, about how you never know whenever the best time of your life is going to be because it could be next. There's always opportunities to keep growing and keep doing things. And she just had so much wisdom of all the things she's done in her life. And I was thinking how cool that is for her and how that could be the same for us. Now, there's a website called Skillshare, Skillshare Skillshare.com. And basically, you can go on. You can take all these different classes like watercolor if you want. You can take business. You can take photography and all these different things and earn these skills and different things in life that maybe you've always kind of thought, I would love to try that. So you can go to Skillshare.com and do that. You take a class, you have a teacher and everything, and it's actually less than most classes would be. You can get an annual subscription for less than $10 a month. So that's pretty legit. And also, if you go to Skillshare.com slash woe, you can also get a free trial with the premium subscription. So everybody go to Skillshare.com slash woe and go try something fun this year that you've never done. But that's so good. I love that. Two Mama. I asked Two Mama the other day. So Two Mama is your daughter, my yeah. grandma. And she said, uh, I said, was Mama a strict parent? She said, oh, she was strong. She said, <laughs> if, she said she was all fun and she was really cool. But when she snapped her fingers, there were six kids in line. And I was <laughs> like, that's awesome. Much respect. And Do you, you know that I, I made my children sit on the front row in church? Did you? Isn't that terrible? That's I awesome. I did because I wanted them to know what it was like to be right there in front where everyone was watching them. That is awesome. And to awesome. behave themselves. <laughs> See, that's hilarious because I like the front row and every time I start walking towards Christians, like, no, 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 not the front row, not the front row. <laughs> it's so funny. Maybe two mama made us do that or something. That's hilarious. Um, so I want to ask you about the legacy that you built because truly you built a legacy. Like you have... 29 grandkids who all love you and all think that they're your favorite, which is really impressive because you love everybody the same and yeah. you pay attention to everybody's life and you're in, you invest in our lives. You showed up to everything I've done, to tennis matches and basketball games and when I walked in Fashion Week and did Dance with Stars, like you were there. And that's so impressive because you have a lot going on. Um, but when you think about leaving a legacy for people, what is something that you keep at the forefront of your mind just as um, the great grandmother that you are. Is there some advice you can give to somebody who say, maybe I haven't had a great legacy, I wanna build a great legacy. What are some of those characteristics that you think have done that? Oh, Sadie, I, you know, I really thought about this and I even looked up the word legacy and what that means. And it just, just live a life that someone wants to emulate, I think. It's good. That they see something in you that they want to be yeah. when they, they grow up. And it's, it's, not, it's not anything special other than just loving your family and 
being available for mm -hmm. them when they are when they need help or yeah. need someone to always be there to back them up. That's good. It. Um, That's a great answer. That's actually like for just somebody who is your great granddaughter. Like I've seen that in your life, and I can say that is your legacy. We all want to be like you. Like everybody. Like two mamas said the other day. She said two papa said, "Man, you are just like your mom." And she said, "Thank you. That's a good thing. I hope I'm just like my I hope mom." He meant it well. I know, and he did mean it well because she was she's strong. Like she was yeah. being strong in something. And then um, another one of our cousins was over today. And she said, um, I said, oh, I'm about to go interview Memo. She said, oh, okay, good. She said, I was actually going to go over and talk to Memo today because I needed some advice because she has just done this so well in her life that I need advice for. And she said, but I'll wait till you're done with me asking you all the advice to share with the world. So you have this whole family who wants to learn from you, seek wisdom from you because we see something in your life that is valuable and um, that has blessed so many people and your strength, your love, your ability to show up and care, your ability to continue to make Christmas brunch for <laughs> however many family members we have at your age is incredible. Yep. And this year, you, after even coming through COVID, you even made brunch for the family. Like, you're just very strong. And that's something that we all look up to. Well, that's something that is fun to do. And I know everyone looks forward to it oh, and enjoys me. it. And I wouldn't disappoint you for the world, so I may be dragging in there at 95 and doing the Nana's Foster. We'll be calling, Christian will be like, are you going to make your chocolate coffee drink? Because <laughs> I'll still drink it. I well, I'll leave it. the recipe anyway. I love it. I love it. We have tried to make it. It's not as good as yours. You have just the magic touch, but it, it was really good. Um, so I was thinking about this. You know, you lived a long life. I am 23. You are, how old are you? Will you tell us? Uh, yes, I'm 89. I will be 90 in April. <laughs> so awesome. <laughs> so looking back, what was something you didn't know at my age that you're glad you learned in life? Oh, honey, I was so dumb. I was, <laughs> I was but, but I was hopeful. That's good. And always looking forward to what was coming. And probably more than anything else, I learned patience mm. because I was a, an impatient person. I yeah. wanted everything to happen, you know, like that. Yeah. Can't click my fingers anymore. <laughs> but it, um, and I learned that from, from your Papa Shack. Yeah. Because he was always, he would always say, let's just let it lie a while. Mm. You know, when there was a, a crisis or something that I wanted to fix right away, especially with, with our teenage children. Mm -hmm. He would say, let's just let it ride for a while wow. and uh, see what happens. And usually it would work itself out. It's good. But it takes patience to That's do that. Good. Yeah. yeah, this generation needs to hear that because I think more than ever we want things to happen like this yes. because things do happen like that right. for us. You know, we have especially apps now. to make things you right. know, happen fast. We want food. We can get it delivered. Right. If we want uh, entertainment, we can click on an app and right. watch a movie. We you get things really fast. And yeah. some things in life you don't just get like that. You know, right. you, it, you need patience, and that's such a exactly. Virtue. That's really cool. Another thing that I learned from him was not to worry, mm. because that we're not even supposed to worry. You know, the, it's scriptural that we are not yeah. not supposed to worry. But he would say, if I can do something about something, I will do it. And if I can't, all the worry in the world will not fix it. Mm, that's good. Yeah. That's good. That's a word for everybody. Yeah, yeah. It is. It's another thing with us right now. I think we're so anxious, like more anxious than ever. And it is scriptural. It says, yeah. do not worry about anything, what you wear, right. what you eat. And right. it, then the Lord even says, like, what, what, what does he compare it to? Do you not see how he takes care of like the birds? Or something? How much more right. will he take care of you? Exactly. So that's so good. Um, of all the decades that you've lived, because you've lived through a lot. Because yeah. I even asked you the other day, I was like, have you ever seen a time like this? And you were like, yes, World War II. And I was like, yeah. oh yeah, you did live through a lot of yeah. things. So of all the things that you lived through, what was one of the hardest decades and what was one of the greatest? Um, the hardest is, was a time during the eighties when, uh, we were going in Louisiana, we were, 
um, just cursed with a, a bad depression. Mm -hmm. The oil industry all left Shreveport where we were living and moved to out of state. And uh, there were, at that time, there were 1,500 house FHA repos mm -hmm. on the market in, Shre in Shreveport, Louisiana, which means people had just walked away from their houses without wow. paying any kind of mortgage or anything. Wow. And um, we were in the real estate business, so it was devastating mm -hmm. to us. And we, we, we lost a lot of our holdings at that time. Financially, it was just totally disrupting. Mm -hmm. and, and it was so hard for me because I had to see what effect it had on my husband, not just yeah. our family, but on my husband. It, and if it had not been for our faith mm -hmm. and our family, we could not have gone through that wow. and come out well. Wow. So that's an easy one, yeah. but that's sad stuff, and I don't even think about that anymore. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like Scarlett. You know? <laughs> I worry about that tomorrow. But anyway, it um, the happy, the best one may yet be there. Mm. You know, I have always felt in my life that whatever age I was, was the best age to be. That's awesome. And I would not go back for anything. Wow. I would not want to make the same mistakes or even correct the ones I made. Wow. Because hopefully I'd learned from them. Yeah. But it, um, so I don't know. We'll just see that what the 90s so hold. I <laughs> love it. I love it. See, that's so cool because not many people say that. And even when I said, like, will you tell us hold your Because people don't want to say that for some reason. Yeah. And for you to probably be like, well, yes, I'm 89 and about to be 90. Yeah. And there's so much more to come. And I do yes. think that that is one of your... I'm having two more grand great grandbabies. You great, are. Great, great grandbabies. You are. You have yeah. a lot to look forward yes. to. And I think that's, that's so powerful. And that's something I want to take from and not look back because even at you know, 23, and this seems crazy because I know I'm really young, but we've done like a lot of really cool things. Yeah. And I feel like sometimes I'm like, oh man, when I was 17, a lot of really good things happened. Like, but always <laughs> believing God for more that like there's greater things to come and they might not seem as significant as a big moment, but they're significant yeah. in the specialty of the moment. And right. so I love that. That's such good mm -hmm. advice. Your, your importance that you put on the big things change. Yeah, change. that's true. Yeah. That's so good. I love that. I think, I, you know, looking at your life, I do think that's one of your keys to success because, you know, you do always look forward to the future and you're, yeah. you know you're not done yet. Um, but what would you say as a key to success for, for aging well? Because when people look at you, they're like, how did you age so well? People always think you're my grandma, not my great grandma. And when they hear the things that you do, like I said, that they like, I'll pass your house and you'll be outside with a leaf blower like, Hey, honey, like you were also the first person I knew that had an iPhone. Like you're, you're constantly just in the cool. <laughs> Not to mention you shop at free people. What? Like that's just where I shop. So we could end up with the same thing one day. Like you're just very cool. What would you say is a tip to aging well? Well, one is to accept change and even embrace it when it's, it's a good thing. Yeah. Keep learning, mm -hmm. always keep learning. I think the biggest thing for me that has been in my favor is being surrounded by people I love and yeah. that love me back. It's good. And that, that is so good. It was so funny you said that because my granddaughter Ashley and I went to Australia four years ago and we were part of a tour with uh, all these Chinese <laughs> women. And <laughs> we, were, we were climbing up a, kind of a minor mountain and of course, I was so much taller than everybody else that I was up with the guide in the front. Yeah. And someone back in the back, one of the Chinese women was hanging back and the guide back there said to her that that woman up there is 84 years old and she's walking with the guide. And she, they all looked at me in a totally different look because in China, when you're that old, the family takes care of you. You yeah. don't do anything anymore. You just sit and grow old. Yeah. And so from then on, they followed everything I did. I'm serious. It was really <laughs> awesome. We were, we had this one woman who was always over my shoulder. No matter where we were, she was there. And then one day she showed up with someone who spoke English. 
and no translate way. it. She had been following me until <laughs> she could get a translator to talk to me. That is amazing. And she wanted me to come to China and talk to Chinese women yes. about how to grow old. Yes, that is amazing. <laughs> That's so good. The You're first famous. thing I told her was tell them to get a computer and learn how to use it. <laughs> <laughs> That's good advice. As I'm telling you, first one with the iPhone, you knew a lot more than everybody else. That is so funny, Mama. You're famous in China. Well, maybe they'll listen to this podcast and be like, "That's the woman. That's the woman that we love." There she is. There she is. She, she's doing it. Man, you are, you truly are an inspiration to so many people. I mean, our whole family. Anybody that knows you. All my friends. They're like, we just want to be like Mama Jo. Um, and even which we haven't announced our daughter's name. We're we're not going to yet, but her name is in remembrance of you in, in a That's really so significant way. So everybody just loves you. Um, you mentioned earlier about going through a really hard time. And, yeah. you know, we're clearly going through a hard time right now in our yeah. world. 2020 was hard and 2021 is a new year, but still a lot of the yeah. same hard things are rolling in. And so from someone who's been through multiple hard times in our nation and your own personal life, What's your advice to people getting through a time like this where it just seems, you know, wild? Oh, I think along with everything else that happens to us, honey, this is all temporary. Yeah. It's, this is, of course, it's that old adage of this world is not your home. Mm -hmm. This that we are just sojourners here, which means we're just stopping for a while. Yeah. Onto a better place and yeah. another place. Yeah. And, it, and to know that the Lord's in charge, this is what... Is so comforting mm -hmm. to me and hopefully to everyone else that is a believer in him that he's, he's in control of this all and he does not want bad things for us. Yeah. This, I, I'm always surprised when someone says in my hearing that how could God let this happen? This is the world that lets things mm. happen to us. It's his... And he is the comforter, the sustainer mm. for us through mm. all of these things that happen yeah. here on earth. Preach. It's just, well, I'm not a preacher. But <laughs> just, hey, where'd I get it from? I got it from somewhere. <laughs> oh, you've got it. You, you have a better legacy there than from me. <laughs> but it, um, my, fa my faith in God is such a simple thing. Mm. It, it really is. I've, I've never thought it had to be complicated. Mm. And it's just that God's in charge and he's going to help me through this. So and there have been some really hard times. You know, we I, I lost a, a nephew that was so dear to me when he was 11 years old. And that was the worst time. And I remember my brother, who was a very strong man in the faith. It was his son. And staying on our way home from the hospital when this happened, that he's in the best place mm. and we're the ones who have to stay here and mm. remember him. Wow. And it was just it's such a powerful testimony mm -hmm. for him to say at that horrible time in his mm -hmm. life. And if nothing else, that just strengthened my faith. Wow. And all this time. Wow. And there's so many people yeah. needed to hear that because... A lot of people have passed away this year that are yes, close to other people. That's right. And a lot of, even I mentioned this in the prayer, just you being here, that a lot of people lost grandparents. And so yes. it's a beautiful thing for them to have somebody wise and older speak into our life. But that is such a beautiful thing for somebody who lost someone so dear to have that perspective yep. that they're the ones who are in the that's better right. place. That's right. And we're getting to them. That's exactly we're, we're a right. little behind the pace to get yep. to the eternity and how beautiful it will be. Um, yeah. You know, when, when Papa, when Papa Shaq died, which was a terrible, horrible time, but I remember your grandpa saying, well, I can just see dad up there saying, well, garden seed, there's Shaq. <laughs> oh, that's so sweet. <laughs> and it just gave it up. It, it just lightened my burden so much Aww. to realize that that was really happening. That's at so that sweet. Time. It was such a sweet thing for him to say. I was just yeah. telling Christian the other day that uh, one of our great grandpas used to say garden seed, yep. <laughs> and how funny that was. Oh man, I remember when when Pepa Shaq passed and. 
I remember we all went and had like a, a party at two mama's house. And I was like, why are we having a party? Because I could not stop crying. Yeah. And uh, I don't know if it was mom or two mama or one of y'all explaining to me that because it is a celebration yeah. because he would want us to be happy that he's in heaven right. and in eternity. And it's just a beautiful thing to shift your mind towards yeah. heaven and to shift your mind towards the goodness of God. Well, I know that's going to help so many, so many people. Pebble Shag and Pebble Howard are hopefully watching, <laughs> listening in. There are a cloud of witnesses. I actually remember whenever I was little, when I would pray, I would say, Dear God, um, would you mind if I talk to Pebble Shag and Pebble Howard for a minute? And I would just talk to them <laughs> as, if, as if I had the line. He would just transfer me. And so uh, they know that I'm talking to them too. Um, well, Mama, you're incredible. We have so much good advice, so many fun stories, and just the legacy that you live. You, you make me cry, so I have to wrap this up. Or, <laughs> what did that start? I'm not stopping. <laughs> but we love you. Everyone in the world is going to feel loved by you just from this podcast. Uh, I know it's funny because you're the most confident, strong person I know. And you said you were nervous to be on this podcast. <laughs> and by sure. the way, you told me you were going to hit me with one-liners and not have anything to say. Yeah, right. Yeah, right. You had gold. So uh, for those of you listening, I hope that this encouraged you and that you uh, take so much good advice from the well of wisdom that she is. And I hope it strengthens your faith in God and it helps you get through hard times and even embrace the times to come and look forward to the future in your life. No matter how old you are, if you're 23 or 89, there are things to look forward to. But Mama, thank you. We love you so thank much. Thank you, Sadie. That was thank so you. good. I loved it. That was so good. Well, Mom, from your wise words years ago, Whoa, that's good. I think we need to add that was really that good. That was really yeah. good. <laughs> I was so glad I was here to hear that. I was like I over there like bawling, crying. I was like, don't look at me because I'm well, crying. Well, I had you like right in the peripheral <laughs> I and I kept seeing you do this. It was making me about to start crying. It so. was so sweet. I loved it. it so much good advice. I also was like, why am I not writing all this down? But then I was like, oh, I don't have to write it down because... It's on the We're podcast. To it. It'll be here forever. I know. So good. I was thinking about, I was like, this is my favorite piece of advice you just said. And I was like, no, this is, no, this is. Oh, like, I know. There is like a million. So much good stuff. So yeah. Good. Yeah. Well, business per usual, on to the good and bad advice that you guys sent in. Thank you for sending in good and bad advice to the Whoa, That's Good podcast Instagram. And also on our Ello Sister app, which we get most of our advice from. So thanks, girls. Thanks, everyone. Um, all right, Mom, what do you think about this in relationships So relationship advice? Be an open book. I think that's great. Of course. Yep. You want that, you know, that idea of like being known by the person that yep. you love and that loves you. So I think be an open book is good. You should, yeah, yeah. be able to kind of like lay it all bare before the person that you love and that loves you. I agree. I think you should wait until you know, you yeah. know, it's a serious relationship. Because yeah. sometimes people get in relationships are like, and I've done this, they're mm -hmm. just like, let me tell you everything about my life. Uh -huh. And then you like break up a week later and they've only yeah. knew you for like two weeks and you're like, now you know everything about yeah. me. Yeah. I guess I'm speaking for like a real, a real relationship. authentic relationship that you want to like, yeah, you think is there for the long haul. Definitely be an open book. That's great. I think whenever you're fully known, that's when you know you're fully loved. There's less security to come for that. Comes with that. All right, marriage is only as good as your singleness. Mm, I don't know about that. I mean, because everybody's story is different. Yeah, I, yeah. I mean, you might be in a rough season in your singleness but you might ha you're gonna have an awesome marriage so yeah. I don't think you should like put that on yourself that like oh because some of my single yeah. days were hard and weren't fulfilling or weren't this my marriage is gonna be the same yeah. so no I agree not necessarily mm -hmm. and like y'all get married at 18 so like our singleness single was like you? high school you were like 10 <laughs> yeah. last time you were single <laughs> right. so that didn't really count yeah uh, all right this is good don't play the victim to circumstances you created Mm, that's really good. That's really yeah. good. Yeah. Yeah. I think people could, yeah, you're like all of a sudden you're like, oh, my life's so terrible. And you're like, um, but 
how did you get yeah. there? And there's choices that you made that yeah. put you there. And I don't think really playing a victim is ever good in any situation. You know, you should see yourself more as a survivor of things or a more of person yeah. who overcame things, not are a victim. That's like Memo. Like, yeah. Memo talked about hard times that she was like, I'm not going to dwell on that. And I'm not even going to think about that because that was so long ago. Like, mm-hmm. it wasn't like, oh, and then this happened to us and someone else. She's like, yeah, it was a hard time for everybody. Yeah. And our faith got us through it. Right. It's inspiring yeah. that way. I think it's good. I love it. Well, guys, y'all need to keep sending some good advice and some bad advice if you want us to talk about it or discuss it. And we will. Uh, but I think we'll just leave it there because Memo knocked it out of the ballpark. She part. killed it. I loved it. It was so good. And I think it was what's so funny about it, too, was you t- called me and were like, um, my mom's a little nervous. Do you think maybe you should be on it too so that she'll talk a lot? And I was like, my mom does not need me. No, well, she's kept, just being humble. Like she's going to kill it. I knew. She kept telling me, she's like, I'm so nervous. And she was like, and I never really like plan as, as far as like give people the questions I'm going to ask them, you know? And she's like, I need to see the questions. Like we need to talk this over. And I'm like, mm-hmm. why are you so nervous? And then she's like, no. and just so you know, she's like, I'm not going to talk much. So you need to be prepared. And then she just brought it. I love it. I was thinking about that verse. Like, don't think of yourself more highly than you ought. Yeah. Cause that is so memo. Like she doesn't think of herself as like, anything but but she has just left this amazing legacy and she she is like you said like who we all want to be when we grow up and so i'm so glad that she was able to share with all the podcast listeners i know i love it Mm -hmm. thanks for being in the house today mom it's fun (laughs) 